Hello, my name is Robert Martyr. I'm the Stray, and this is the Three Count Podcast. Welcome. Do you want to get live with me? Do you really want to ride with me? I'm in the club. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents That Winch Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And by now, you know, after season five and our 300 and something episode, right? I would just hope you say it with me, I am your Sherpa. Because like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. But like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering ring. So who's entering the ring today? You can find this man at PPW, DOA, TTW, CCW, Prestige, Invictus, West Coast Pop, WAW, Remarkable, and so many other promotions. He is the Poison Youth. He is the South City Stretcher. He is the Stray Robber Martyr. Hell yeah. Hell Pretty yeah. intro, man. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can curse, but... Uh, oh, we can. It's, it's okay. free. Yeah, but... It, um, yeah, I'm really happy to be on. I know we've been trying to do this for a while, so it's really good that we get to do this finally. Yeah. Well, we ran into each other like at uh, B, uh, at Bio by a wrestling pro. Yes, right? we did. And then we caught up again with each other at uh, Remarkable. Well, it was actually a wrestling open. You had just finished with uh, Remarkable. You had yes. that match with Desmond Cole. Yes. Um, and then we started talking some more and stuff like that. And I was like, yo, like, we. We're two passing ships because we were supposed to meet at Invictus, but unfortunately we had missed each other at that spot. So it was just, it was cool to be able to sit back and chat with you and just kind of like pick your brain a little bit. And then I was like, yo, there's no doubt that we're going to have to do this episode and have some fun, like Absolutely. chatting it up. And I, I feel like, uh, especially at, uh, at bio, it was very interesting because we were in the midst of training and all that stuff. So it was like very interesting to see everything go down. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and the thing too is like, uh, you know, not that we'll name drop, but Ricky Shane Page was running the the, he was running the whole thing. So we were just kind of like listening to him and like working because it was like, um, for me too, it was like I think it was like my third or fourth time, like just being up there and working with the guys. So it was like, uh, it was a, it was crazy. It was a crazy pace, and I was like, yo, I'm here for it because I was like, you know, especially what was it? We did that one, the uh. It was like cardio the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of cardio. Yeah. That woke me up. I'm not going to front like that woke me up because I wasn't, I guess I should say like I wasn't tired, right? But there was just a lot of movements that was requiring a lot of different strengths that like I, even myself, like I'm, I'm in the gym probably like four or five days a week. And there was a lot of things that like I just wasn't conditioned with. So I was like, all right, now it's time to like up my conditioning with different types of workouts. And so like now it's like, I'm 20 minutes, like a 20 minute run session, 20 minute stairs, 20 minutes on elliptical, like just trying to like keep my body. Your cardio moving. up. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough, man. It, it was. And it, it was like an eye opener because I was like, oh, shit. Well, I wasn't prepared for this. So hopefully like, you know, hopefully I can keep up, which I did. But it was still like a very big challenge. I was like, oh, wow. Like, let's see. Let's test how much shape I really am in. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it was it was good. It was a good challenge. I loved it. And then like, you know, now I'm like sat back and I know a lot of my other clients are all mad because like a lot of stuff that Ricky was showing us, uh, I have them doing now on our turf oh, wow. okay. and they hate it. And yeah. I'm just here for it. <laughs> you know? Great. It's great. I was like, oh, this sucks. And he, the best part is he was telling us like, oh, this is going to suck real bad for you guys. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I saw. Uh, uh, so you know, we were doing like uh, like the frog jumps, where we we're like literally like frog hopping. I guess yeah. is what we can call it. And uh, yeah, so now I have my clients like running and doing that, and they're like, "Bro, I'm gonna fall every time I do this." I was like, "Well, we're gonna have to learn how to get balance." So yeah. figure, it out. <laughs> so, figure it out. So what what do you do? You're a personal trainer, I assume. Yeah, so uh, I've been doing it now for about a year, well, like three years now, going to my third year. Yeah. So my second year going is my third year. So yeah, and I've been up in uh I moved from Maryland to Massachusetts. And uh like that's where I've been now for you know almost a year now. So it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of fun, you know. Wow. So yeah, so now I got a, a lot of cool stuff that like the uh like that we'll do right as far as like wrestling goes. I'll incorporate that stuff into my personal training. So like not just strength and not just strength building, but more strength and conditioning. 
and endurance. And so like a lot of my clients are like always doing like a lot of core work and they hate it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I, I'm like a, I always consider my, my style of lifting power building. So it's a big, big mixture of deadlift squats being my main base. Um, but also making sure I'm getting like my bodybuilding in there, but I love my lifts. So like, always try to get a good balance of that. Like I can never go without deadlifting. Yeah. Uh, so I know a lot of people say against deadlifting too often, but I, I just love it too much to give it up, you know, especially when you have good form. Just right. Just that was always my problem was like, I remember when I first started lifting and really getting into it and getting heavy into it. Right. Like my deadlifting form was trash. Yeah. So I had a, I had a couple of people like teach me how to properly deadlift. And now like, I, I, I still Olympic deadlift every once in a while, but I don't do it as much as I used to. And it's because I, I found the trap bar to be way much more fun to use, right? And I know a lot of people be like, well, that's not really deadlifting. I'm like, I don't care. Like 315 is still 315, whether you're Olympic or you're trap barring. I don't really care. It's it's yeah. fun. It's fun to do. And then like if you're doing a lot of weight, like I, I would love you. I would love anybody to go tell somebody who's <laughs> deadlifting with a trap bar like close to 900 pounds that they're not really that they're not really lifting that you know <laughs> what i mean yeah it, it goes to me like i think about the same people who talk about like smith machines and and for those who are knowing right uh they're like yeah you you did 315 on a smith machine but you're not really like lifting i'm like what that this it's it's weight bro it's still weight like it's still weight yeah, yeah. <laughs> people still weight. people <clears throat> It, they're like, well, in competition, you don't use smish machines. I'm like, well, obviously, because there's a, some type of assistance, but that doesn't mean you're not lifting the right. proper weight. You know what I mean? Like, people often forget that. Yeah, I stay with the big uh, – to kind of jump on your point, I stay with the big three. I do love doing deadlifts. I love squatting, and I love uh, bench press. Like, But I've like kind of like transitioned away from barbell bench press, right? And it's only because like as I'm getting older in age – um, I'm looking for more function and mobility out of my, uh, shoulders. Yeah. So I kind of like left, I have it left, left, but I'm like more into like just dumbbells and looking to, uh, add weight, but then also add volume into it as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So let me, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Um, what, what do you do to avoid pain in your, in your rotators and your shoulders? Because this is something I, I find myself dealing with a lot. Uh, when I do any type of pressing that involves my shoulders, it's like I used to be. I used to be crazy, right? I used to press eighty pounds, ninety pounds shoulder press, and I. And one day I was just like, I just can't do this anymore. It's like too painful. I yeah. just can't do it. So now I I do thirty five max. I won't even hit forty, mm. and I do high rep repetitions. But even even now I'm being told like, don't even do shoulder press anymore like just it's just not worth it you know it's funny because like if you look back at like <clears throat> the list that arnold schwarzenegger was doing right with the arnold presses when you're like doing a shoulder press rotate do, do, back through. Deals, yeah yeah and nobody nobody back then was like no that dude don't do that don't do this right it's it's a, a to me right my personal opinion right guys if you want to argue about it you can argue in the comment, comment section i don't really care uh and also by the way this goes into wrestling because hey you got to be able to pick people up and safely put them down. Like we, we have to put trust in there. Uh, but for me, it's a lot of band work to, to start with. Like you got to warm those shoulders up. Let, let, uh, to, not to, I, do cold, I do cold Turkey it a lot. That's, yeah, that's don't, me. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, goes back right. to shoulders. So it was just, you know, going <laughs> crazy. It goes back to something that, uh, I don't know if you're a fan of the show peacemaker with yeah. John Cena. It goes back to something that John Cena said in that in that show, right? He, uh, the very first episode, very first scene, right? When he's talking to the doctor and they have the x-ray machine of his shoulder. And he's like, Doc, can you enhance the uh, the shoulder? Because, uh, you know, I like to work on the little muscles just as much as the big muscles. And it, it's a funny line. But to me, I'm like, Yo, that is so serious. Like, And then she she says, you know, this isn't tender. Like, you don't have to worry about that. But it's, it's one of those things where it's like you have to warm up those shoulders properly. You have to get them moving, right? And, you know, you have three heads in the shoulder, so you need to focus on, you know, the front, the top, and the back. So make sure that you're getting all that band work in because if you're not warming your shoulders and you go with cold turkey, like, injuries do happen. And, yeah. and, you know, and when you're young, you don't think about those things because you're like, oh, just in a couple of days, I'll be good again. 
but then like you go back and you're like, oh, I still got a little pain here. And then you're just like, I gotta, I gotta get back in my band work. So yeah, I always tell people get a, get a band, warm up. Uh, another, another thing that I usually tell people too is get a lacrosse ball and set it on your shoulder and then set it against the wall and like, and you're going to look like, around. yeah, you're going to look like you're doing a, you know, the stanky leg, you're just doing your yeah. dance, <laughs> so you dancing, but well, uh, yeah, that works. In a match back last January, so almost a year now, um, I would say, yeah, oh, exactly a year. Uh, well, not exactly, but at the time, um, I pinched my AC and I still haven't formally gotten it checked, checked out. Mm. Um, but I've been doing a lot of different remedies and I've heard that, that, that ball on the wall is the, is the truth. I heard that mm-hmm. that's the truth. So I, I'm, I'm thinking of when I go to the gym later today, I'll, I'll definitely be doing that. Cause you know, it's, it's always like, there's this bump in wrestling. I call, I call it a Looney Tunes bump where you put your arms out here and you fall like this. Yeah. I can't do the Looney Tunes bump anymore. Mm. My, my shoulder won't go that far anymore. So my shoulder can reach over my head, but this one, this as you can see, yeah, it, I can see the difference. As you can see, the difference of how far one can go versus the other one. And I had this like mentality when I started wrestling that oh, I'll never get injured, ever. <laughs> like I'll never get injured. Like I'm too good. Uh, and and it's not even a thing. And you you don't you you always think it's something that you can't control. No, mm-hmm. I just body slam somebody. My shoulder just gave out. It, literally nothing I could have done. You it's know, always I, it's always the things that you don't expect to happen that happen, right? I know for me, uh, and this was like right before I got into personal training, but um, I was teaching the guys how to do a simple roll, right? And we're talking about like a three-quarter roll. And uh, I did it wrong, right? And I thought something felt weird the first time I did it. But I was like, ah, it's all right. I'm going to do it again. I did it again, right? Wrong, wrong side full transparency and put so much torque i ripped uh i tore my lower ab so i was out for like 12 weeks oh my god because of it and so like yeah i, I it's it's a, it's the craziest it's the littlest things that we do that you just you feel it right uh just uh recently and I, I shared a story because i was there not because like i you know i, I can't remember the uh, dude's name but watch the kid do a drop down and as he did a drop down, like he was hitting the, he was hitting the ring pretty hard when he was doing a drop down. I was like, yo, and he was hitting with his elbows down and his fists closed. Right. And he's doing these drop downs. And finally he did one and all of a sudden I hear, Oh, and his shoulder popped out of place. Oh <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I tell you, it's the, it's the littlest things that like happen. So we have to like, when we're in the gym or where you're not doing anything, we're sitting on the couch or something like, Hey, if, if you didn't go work out or you haven't lifted or you haven't stretched out, stretch out. Like keep that body nice and loose, nice and warm, because at the end of the day, you can you jump in and you do something crazy, boom, that's it. You know, uh, what was it? My my buddy Joe Ocasio, right? Throwing a simple clothesline tears his ACL. So I mean, those things happen, bro. And it's like, yeah. So now we have to we have to think about those things, especially when we're young, like man, like and like yourself, right? You know, you're like I think you're 23. getting close to mid- yeah. I was like, you're getting close to mid twenties, right? It's like, Very cool, yeah, we have to we have to make sure that we're properly warming up and properly cooling down. That's another thing that I just started learning to to do again. And I say do again because I was doing these things. I got out of it for about like six, seven years. And recently I just got back into to warming down, cooling down the body. But like recovery is also a big thing. Like if you're tired and you you think you're going to get like, I don't want to say it like this. And, you know, forgive me for this, people, when you hear this, but when you think you're getting tired and you don't want to be you don't want to go lift in the gym do a recovery day cuz you don't want to get hurt you want to keep your body kind of nice like do some foam rolling do some band work and do some light cardio and then call it a day go home rest and then get back into it the next day yeah yeah people don't want to hear that you know um like it cuz uh, you, you see people like Sam Sulek and and all these like big jack dudes that are like oh I don't believe in recovery days you know what i mean like my recovery day is doing this many sets of this many, like it's a, it's a deload. And I'm like, well, I still feel like you need, you need like a deload is not enough. You know what I mean? You need, you need a genuine 
day where you're like, I'll, I'll just go and do cardio. You know what I mean? And that's it. Yep. I'll do cardio. I'll do like maybe like five sets of 20 push-ups, something like that, and then I'll go home. And you know what I mean? That's Your body needs those days because especially if you're doing – you're at the gym doing like a, a, a high intensity – because not everybody lifts with high intensity. People don't yeah. lift with, always lift with high intensity. But that's my training style. It's like high intensity. I'll do four to five sets maximum. I don't like overtraining. I trained with, funny enough, I trained with Dynamite Kid's nephew. Mm. And he overtrains. Like I was dead. I was dead after we were done. Like he was like, he was like, mate, I probably overtrained, but you know, screw it. You know, and I'm like, man, you look great now. But I'm like, dude, how do you do this? Like he's doing. We did five, six sets to absolute failure. Mm. And then after you're done well of chest press. So yeah. absolute and I'm talking about <clears throat> absolute failure, Red Dog. Absolute failure. Like nothing left. And then that's when he'll spot you. Like that's his mentality, right? It's like you got nothing left. Your arms are shaking. You're about to cry. He's then he's helping you. Right. And then from there, push-ups till fail. And then from there dips till fail and you do that circuit five to six sets and it's mm. it was one of the most brutal workouts i've ever done truly like it was brutal and i've never been blown from lifting ever but i mm. was um and you know i was like i'm glad i did it because i got through it but would i do that every single day like he does no and that's also like a thing of like understanding your body because like uh I, I forgot what his name is uh tom something um uh, tom platts you know who tom platts is sounds familiar tom platts he has like the best legs in bodybuilding and his thing was that he wanted to lift like arnold who was lifting six days a week right and he got small doing that but when he lifted four to five days a week with high intensity, sometimes even three, he got huge. So it's all about listening to your body and what works for your body. That's why I never get intimidated when somebody's like, well, I just live six to seven days a week. I don't stop. Like, glad for you, bro. I can get the same pump and get the same results doing less days. You know, to me, that's more impressive than having to go to the gym every day and kill yourself, you know, at the gym and you're there for like, I couldn't imagine being at the gym for six hours unless mm -hmm. it's my job. You know what yeah. I mean? No. Like, unless I'm an IBBF pro bodybuilder and I'm just doing this for leisure and, like, health. Couldn't imagine going to the gym for six hours a day. Couldn't imagine it. You couldn't pay me to be in the gym. Like, I love the gym, but I don't love it that much. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> I'm not making it my whole personality. Exactly. That's the one thing. Yeah. Exactly. No, 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 no. It's one of those things too where I look at I look at lifting and like for me, uh, at the max I think I've been like at the max right hour and a half, like not including cardio hour and a half lifting that's it because after there's a there's a point in time where like the uh, return on investment is no longer there and it's like now you're just you're just damaging the muscle now you, instead of building it you're just damaging it for that's me what yeah that's what I've heard, that like there gets to a point where your body is just like I can't. Yeah. And it's cool to be sore, right? It's cool to be sore, but it's not okay to be roasted to the point where you're like, the next morning you get up and you're like, I just can't even move out of the bed right now. I have no functionality. I'm like, that's, that's not cool. Like, yeah. and I know a lot of people always say that, that myth, right? Of, uh, so, I mean, it, it's, it's cool to be sore, right? And it's, it's good to have that soreness, but not to the point where you just can't even roll out of bed. Cause like, that's damaging, right? And you're at the point where you're like, you don't even want to go to the gym. Some days you just don't get motivated because you're like, I don't want to be that sore again. Uh, for me, like, I like to, the the idea of like, hey, like, I'm sore. Like, I can still move. I have some functionality so that I can do my next day, which is why, like, for my splits, what uh, I know a lot of people are different, right? I'll do like a, a – I do legs on Monday, push on Tuesdays, pull on Wednesdays. Uh, the Thursdays use like my recovery day. Um Friday is either a plyometric or speed and training or speed and agility. And then Saturday, uh, I, I usually work out with my daughter. So we just kind of okay. hit everything. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But, yo, those are like those are the splits. And I'm and at max, at max, we're there hour and a half. Not including if you're doing that many days, 
you're again, like you said, hour and a half. You're not there for yeah. five, six hours. It would be a very different story if you that that's the thing. It's all about volume. Like if 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 you're going six days a week, you shouldn't be there longer than what you said, hour and a half. Yep. <laughs> You should not be. You should not be lift. Your body is a, is a, is as much of a car as we don't we think it is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if you're putting, uh, if you're if you're dropping like 400 miles every day, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's you can't do that. Um, Especially if you're like, and, and I love the analogy you just use. It's like it's, if you're in a car, right? You're not trying to redline constantly, yeah. like. It's it's one thing like if you're redlining from like, let's say a thirty minute drive. That's that's one that's one thing. But if you're doing that over six hours, no, absolutely not. But also like the other thing I tell a lot of people too, even my clients, right? I'll I'll talk to them about this. Uh, like take your rest time, and don't. And I'm not talking about like a, a five to ten minutes of rest. I think that's ridiculous, right? When you're in the gym, and if especially if you're in the gym for six hours, you're probably doing that. You're probably taking ten minutes of rest. Like, hey, your rest period should be like two to three minutes if it's just you, right? And I say that because, like, there's studies showing that, like, people who who rest two to three minutes are between, like, 80 to 90% of their recovery, and that way you can get more volume into it. But, like, when I'm with my clients, like, I joke with them all the time about that that stat, and I tell them, but you're paying for my time, so you're only going to get a minute of rest because I don't need to be talking to you for two or three minutes. I was like, yeah. I get annoying as shit. But, um yeah, and so tell people like take two three minutes off and just relax. You know, people can be pissed because you know you see those guys who are like on their phone texting or like watching videos and stuff. Sometimes hey. I be, I get lost in the sauce and I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, I've been here for three minutes. Well, what the yeah. fuck am I doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, luckily I don't really talk to that many people in the gym. Well, let, let me ask you this: What is your premier time if you were to if you live in a commercial gym? Right. What's your premier time to go, in your opinion? Oh, for for me, I, if I'm trying to hit all the machines, I'm trying to hit. Yeah, I'm between like twelve to two. <laughs> like, oh, so you're an early bird. Okay. Yeah, nobody's nobody's in there in the no one's there at lunchtime, right? Like, just let me let me be, let me get it in. From I'm a night from, owl, bro. I go at like one in the morning. That's. I, I know that. I I here's the thing is like that's. Very good and also very bad because there's nobody in the gym, nobody's fucking bothering you. There's no music. It's just you and your and your weights. But yep. also, it fucks up my sleep schedule. Yep. So, well, what I do, what I try to do is, uh, I'll, I'll get there at eleven and leave by one. That's probably mm -hmm. what I try to do. You know, because by by the time I'm in the middle of like being done with a deadlift or, or, or something like that, people have already trickled out at that point. Yeah. So I would challenge you. I would challenge you to go in at 9 PM, be done at 11 and you start sleeping at 12. Okay. Right? And then get yourself up at like eight or nine, depending on where you work. I, I don't know your schedule like that, but I would just get that full rest period because that sleep schedule has to be on point too, because like what you end up happening, right? While you're asleep, that's when your body's healing itself. And that's that's so important that rest period. Like I'm I'm guilty of not being able to get enough sleep. Like my Fitbit hates me because it's telling me my sleep score is like always in the 60s and 70s, and very oh. rarely I'm in the 80s. <laughs> so it's always like, hey, yo, bro, get more rest. I'm like, nah, we gotta, we gotta go, man. We're we're ready. <laughs> yeah. But I find like my 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 uh my perfect window is like seven hours of sleep. And when I okay. when I get that, like I'm the whole day I'm running at 100 miles an hour. Gotcha. I heard. I heard when as you get older, like that that window of sleep that you need kind of gets shorter to function. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have kids and stuff like that, it definitely happens. <laughs> oh, okay. I yeah, I know. I'm I'm guilty because like my my problem is is like uh, let's be let's be real. We and this is a wrestling podcast, so we'll, we'll jump into it. But uh, I'm a wrestling nerd, so I love watching anything that's wrestling related. And so most times we watch wrestling at like seven or eight o'clock, right? And that just yeah. doesn't end till 10. If you're watching Raw, 11 o'clock. And so like I'm in bed at like midnight because I'm like, oh. And then I remember, oh, yeah, I got to I, I walk my daughter to the bus stop every day. So I'm like, I'm getting up at six six thirty in the morning 
to walk her out the door by 6.50. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I'm going to get yeah. some more sleep. But then I remember, oh, I got to go train clients from 8 o'clock in the morning till my last client leaves at 6 o'clock at night. And then in that time period, I still got to go lift. I'm like, bro, like, this is exhausting. But, yeah. you know, you do it because you, you love it. But then you got to remember, too, like, you have to get that rest period, which is also why I put a recovery day in because I'm like, I need this day just for me. Just for you. Exactly. Yeah. So let's get, let me, let me ask you, man, let me ask you about this. So I like asking this question. We're already <laughs> 20 minutes into this, yeah. uh, but who is Robert Martyr? Robert Martyr. Uh, that's a very layered question because Robert Martyr is a lot of things, but I would say the biggest thing that Robert Martyr is, is that he's someone that so thoroughly believes in what he's doing, especially wrestling. It, it's that wrestling quite literally saved his life saved my life but saved roberto's life you know what i mean uh myself and robert martyr are one in the same in a lot of ways but they're also very different i feel like uh when i broke my neck in seven, 2017 um i didn't know if i was gonna wrestle again i got hurt in training real bad i got uh hurricane ron and then i landed on my head and i snapped my c6 but it wasn't the straight through the middle. It was the top right corner. Mm. So it wasn't a full break. So that's what essentially, you know, pretty much saved my career. Um, and they asked me, like, hey, do you do any, like, wrestling neck bridges or anything, any neck strength training? And they, I was like, yeah, I do. I do it all the time, neck bridges for, like, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. And... Uh, you know, it's not the best for you, but it comes in handy when you need it. And uh, it literally came in handy because the muscle went through the bone to stop it from breaking. Mm. And they told me that uh, that quite literally is the reason why I'm like, I'll be good. So wrestling legitimately saved my life. So since then, I was like, oh, wow, I almost became a martyr for wrestling. I almost died for wrestling. So. That's that's like the best way I could put Robert Martyr is that somebody that's willing to die for what he believes in. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, it's funny for me because like getting into the sport, right? Um, to the performance, whatever you want to call it, entertainment. I don't I don't give a damn. Uh, sports entertainment, whatever. You know, uh, I it was something for me. Like when I when I graduated out of college, I was like, all right, I I don't know what to do with my life. Like I had just got out of the military back in like 2012 and I was like, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. So I went back into college and I got out of college and I was like, I don't know what to do. And then like, I got, I got fat. <laughs> I got big. Yeah. And so like, uh, I was in the gym lifting and I saw this kid wearing a John Cena t-shirt, right? Uh, the old green and yellow shirt. And, uh, we started talking back and forth and, uh, uh, I ran into him later in like a grocery store randomly and he was stocking bread. So I asked him, I was like, yo, like, I was like, I've, wrestling's been around me my whole life. Like everywhere I've looked, like I've seen WWE or TNA, M Impact, whatever you want to call it, uh, yeah. AEW, like AEW before that, WCW. Uh, but all this stuff was around me and I, I was like, man, maybe this is like a sign that I'm supposed to do this. So I finally asked him and he was like, yeah, man, I, I, I have a show coming up and it was a, it was a dark arts show right the dark arts we don't we don't call what you want backyard uh so i i went checked it out and then i got involved and then like one of my friends was like if you're going to do something do something otherwise stay here and uh i made yeah. the jump and like bro i remember like just training for the first time and like just having so much fun that was like this is where i'm meant to be like mentally i'm at my best when i'm in the ring because like i'm just i'm there and i'm i'm not paying attention to the rest of the world. I just, I don't know. There's a high to it that I, it's, it's hard to explain. And I, I, that I, like you, like, I think wrestling really brought me back to life that I, I absolutely needed. Like full transparency. Like I, I love the fact that you said it, you know, obviously with neck bridges, it, it saved your life, but like mentally too, like I was just drained. Like I was ready to just kind of like, whatever, this is what it is. I hate, I hate everything. Right. I mean, the only two things that I loved in my, well, so B3, right, was my dog, my daughter, my wife, right, my, my family. That was it. Like, that was the only thing I had that was like, I'm happy. And then I found this thing that literally just like whew, put a whole new thing into me. And I was like, this is, this is where I need to be. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's like, 
mentally that's what I needed too was wrestling. Wrestling was like the the one thing that was just holding me together. You know what I mean? It was really that that thing that it was just a glue to my life. Like everything, any any solace that I needed, any anything that I felt like I just. Any time I would get so stressed out on life or whatever was going on in my life, it was always wrestling holding me together. So I always felt like when I was a kid, like I needed to do it and I needed to do it soon. So that's why I started so young. Yeah, that was something I did notice. I was like, damn, bro, like you travel a lot and you're young. Like you have like the mileage, like yeah. flight wise, all over the place. Dude, I tried, man. I. I was so, like, I didn't want to be a Florida guy. That was, like, a big thing that I was, like, very self-conscious of because I would, I would always hear, like, oh, yeah, he's a good Florida wrestler. And I would hate mm. that. I hated that so much. So eventually I was just like, oh, man, uh, I, I got to get out of Florida. I got to not be a Florida guy. So for, like, a year straight, I like I just figured it out, man. I just was, like ruthless as far as like trying to get bookings that were out of state and eventually like now it's my only bookings i don't even wrestle in florida anymore it was one of those things where i learned um and i kept hearing the word um 30 miler you know what i mean yeah and i did something like that yeah yeah and i didn't want to be that guy like i know like there's a couple of promotions when i was when i was training in maryland that were just like around the corner and they were all like cool but like I only saw like the same like six people were at these shows and I was like, great. I want to be, I want to go to other places. I want to work in other, other states. So finally I went from being the, around the local to like traveling out to like West Virginia into Pennsylvania, down to Virginia and then in Maryland. And then I went to Delaware and then eventually I reached out to Jersey and then I moved. Right. And now it's like, cool now i'm in massachusetts i've worked a couple of places in massachusetts worked in a couple of places in maine and then travel back down to pennsylvania down to maryland because i just want people to know like red dog is not limited to just like one place the dmb yeah just yeah. like places in maryland no i'm tr i'm moving around and i want that to be known so it's it's definitely cool watching you because it's like i think one week i talked to you you were in the new england area and then you know, I, I we were talking about doing this and getting this together, and you were headed to Canada, and I was like, yeah. I, I looked at your, I looked at your, uh, just your cage match, and I know that gives like a rough estimate of where everything is, and I was like, damn man, my boy is traveling out in Cali, back in, back in, you know, PA down to like here, you're Dude, there. It was, it, it's nuts. It's like cage match only gets like half of that shit, right. you know, like so it's like way more than what's on cage match, like. There's a whole four years of my career that's not even listed on there because it says I started in 2018, which isn't right. correct. You know what I mean? So, um, what's it called? Uh, after that, uh, like uh, as far as like just traveling and traveling and traveling, like you just have to be ruthless about it. You have to just take what comes and like really impress. You know what I mean? Because that's like the big thing is like impressing, impressing, impressing. Because if you don't impress, then nobody's gonna bring you back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I always treated every book and like, oh, I might not come back. You know what I mean? I got to make sure this is worth it. Uh, and also like the, the money that I spent on the trip, all that stuff. No, you, you bring up a great point. The, the money that you're spending because like traveling ain't cheap, bro. <laughs> like It's not expensive. <laughs> Especially we go here, there, everywhere. Like I know just for me, like just driving wise, like we're not even talking about the mileage of my car. We're just talking about like the tolls that I got to drive through and you know, then you're like the gas, food, you know, if you're staying at a place, right, lodging wise, like how much is it going to cost for like a hotel room to drive back the next day? Like, yeah, that's, it's ridiculous, man. But you know what? The 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 funny thing is listening to you talk about it, though. It's like, um, it was like listening to when like Rusev or Miro, right, when he was talking about like his come up journey. And he was like, I think he was a taxi driver. Oh, okay. yeah he like he was like driving people around so whether it was like uber or whatever but he was traveling and he said like doing that job like helped prepare him for the Rest road life yeah uh i you know what's funny is like i come from a long line of like truck drivers so mm -hmm. they all travel long long distances so 
my parents never got really worried about like, oh, I'm, I'll be driving seven hours today. You know what I mean? Like they never really cared that much because it was like, oh, seven hours is a breeze. You know what I mean? Like to them, that's nothing, which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but as far as pro wrestling goes, like I, I feel another thing that sets me apart is like I, I watch so much of it and I feel like not enough people watch like not just a lot of wrestling, but a lot of different wrestling. Um, yeah. Like, I make sure I watch every style. Like, bro, I barely watch, like, anything current. Like, I, I do. I keep up to make sure, you know, I, I'm caught up with everything that's going on. But all the wrestling that I watch is, like, way before I was born. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's always, like, and they, they always tell you, especially, like, if that's the character that you're, the mindset that you have of, like, who you're trying to portray, right? You Everybody has, like, those guys, right, that, that they they – uh, vibe to right uh whether it's we can use we can use like eddie guerrero right or we can keep it all the way old right and we just talk about the briscoes you nick bockwinkle right we exactly you, you have those guys that you you're like well i like that style or i like that brute brute style of like a bruno san martino right and I, or i like that style of like you know getting in and out of locks and and figuring stuff out so i'm more of like a bob Backlund type or i want to be a high flyer and i, I yeah. love hoover to guerrera right so everybody has like that stuff that they pay attention to i i watch yours 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 definitely is like a is a is a homage to like old school like brute style yeah yeah and that's like it's what i try to do it's my favorite style of wrestling it's what I, what keeps me engaged so it's like you know i can appreciate like wrestling that i can't do that's my favorite type of wrestling wrestling that i cannot do um but my favorite wrestling to do is my type of style it's like uh i always watch like fit finley as a kid and like watch his run with the u.s title and like oh six yeah. and that stuff to me was like so cool like i thought he was the coolest wrestler ever like he had the best theme song my name is Finley. i love to fight like i you know, I, I love that so Watching Eddie and and, and uh, Benoit and Kurt and all those guys, like I always felt like, just that style that I grew up on was was the style that I wanted to do. Yeah, it's that that hard hit him, hit him style. I know for me, it it was for me. I was more of a like Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho when he was like the original Lionheart, not like the yeah. new version of the Lionheart. Not to have a problem with it, but you know, there's just a clear difference between those two. Uh, and then like Rey Mysterio was my favorite. It's still my favorite wrestler of all time. That doesn't change. Yeah. But like CM Punk also kind of kind of bring it current style, like just those guys like had like this uh this fun knack of like being able to showcase what they did and then having a twist on their own style of wrestling, which I thought was always cool. That that's that's where I look. That's my look up too. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, I I think that a big thing is also like making sure you're not replicating, making sure that you're innovating all, all constantly. That's really hard to do. It's really hard to like make sure that you're constantly creating new stuff. And it's like, you, I feel like to innovate, you have to imitate for a little bit yeah, just to figure out what works and what works for you. Like, I feel like I've finally passed that imitation part and I can fight, start finally like working on my own stuff. Yeah, and it, and it all goes back to like character work too, right? Like where you're you're growing into this character, you're developing this world, and then the character kind of like takes over the world and starts. You start to understand like, okay, this is how he would throw a punch, or this is how he would throw a kick, or if he was in the middle of a uh, like a dog fight with like kendo sticks, right? This is how he's gonna react to this or that, right? He's gonna be ready for this, right? I know, like um, for me, I wanted my character to have like a bunch of different styles, so it's. And I mean that as in a sense of like dress wear, right? Um, so I have an all black gear, right? Where it's black pants, black boots, and a and a black vest, right? The reason for a vest, duh, because like he doesn't want to get hit, right? And if he does get hit, it's in the vest and it doesn't it doesn't affect him as much. I have the all red gear, which is similar to the guy who's like right there, sitting right there, right? Like Deadpool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a red and black in camos, I have black camos, I have uh great my my air force camos i like have all that stuff because i want people to know like oh different styles of how i'm dressed is different ways i'm presenting myself so when i come out in like camo shorts and you know that cliffs that red dog is there with the i don't give a fuck attitude and we're just there to do damage and talk a lot of shit uh if he's there in his all reds he's there to have fun to 
you know, make a mockery of the other person, but also like just kick the shit out of them. And if I'm in all black, it's it's stealth mode. Like we're in it to we're hey, look, we're looking to break bones and break necks and just walk out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I, I dig that. I don't think that's many people are doing that. So that's it's pretty sick. Yeah. So I usually I'll sit in the back and I'll be like, yo, what kind of attitude do I want to have today? And I'm like, oh, I'm feeling kind of snarky. Yeah. But let's use let's use the, the camo pants today. <laughs> so it's yeah. always it's always something different. <laughs> Hell yeah. But um, what was that moment that you got into th- that that you saw and you're like, you know what? That's it. I got I got to get in. Um, probably I saw Brian Danielson versus Homicide. Yeah. Ring of Honor. And they saw their when Homicide won the world title, and I was like, "Wow, like that's, I have to do this now. Like this is crazy. Like the reaction that that match got, Homicide winning. Um, I watched uh, Eddie Guerrero versus Chris Benoit. Benjamin 2003 was another match, and I was like, "Wow, like this is." I think that if that I think the Benoit match, the Eddie Benoit match, made me fall in love with wrestling. That that uh. What, what's it called? The the Brian Danielson match is what made me want to do it, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. So I think that that was kind of the split right there. It was like, wow, I love this. Wow, I have to do this now. Um, but yeah, that was, that was it. You know, my grandmother used to, she was a tape trader. So she had all these, uh, yeah, my grandmother was a tape trader. She had all these old wrestling VHS DVDs and just would play them for me and that's the only thing that would make me sit still as a kid uh because i had really bad adhd so i had like a i could not sit still but wrestling was the only thing that that calmed me down it's it's funny because like i feel and i i've said this a few times like on this podcast right with uh other wrestlers i always feel like it's the women in our lives that introduce us to wrestling i think i found like a couple people who said it was like their dad or their uncle or their grandfather but the majority of the time, it's usually a grandmother, an aunt, uh, or uh, you know, like your mom, right? It's yeah. always somebody there who's like, "Hey, come check this out." And you're like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> and then you're stuck. <laughs> it's so crazy, like it, it really is nuts. Um, but yeah, she was a tape trader, and that's like, it's so crazy to think about because she had so many wrestling VHSs as a kid. Hmm. But yeah. like, that's it. It does get crazy. I know for me, my aunt was the one that introduced me to, to pro wrestling. She, okay. uh, I was a, uh, I was watching Jake the Snake Roberts unleash his Cobra on Macho Man, like as a recovery, as a, as a recap. And I was like, Yo, does wrestling get like this all the time? She's like, No, never. Like, stop watching this. It's like I can't. <laughs> so that's what got me. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, uh, let me ask this question. So. You kind of talked about like I, I maybe it's not the worst bump, maybe it is, right? But uh, you know, you breaking your neck was a pretty severe bump, right? That was I would say one hundred percent sucks. Yeah. Uh, but what was the worst bump that you have taken? Oh man, if you watch it's on YouTube, it's uh, me versus Anthony Henry, and Henry takes me and throws me into the pole head first. Mm. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's on YouTube. You can watch it. That or he in that same match he kicks me in the back harder than I've ever been kicked in my life. Mm. So, if if you just watch that match, that whole match was the worst bump that I've ever taken. If you watch that whole match, the whole match, <laughs> it was one of my best matches though. I would say that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, all right, before we jump into my favorite part of the three count podcast, uh, I got to ask this question: What's one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn being in the business? You are expendable. You are absolutely 100% replaceable, expendable. You are not special. Somebody else will find a new you and a better you like that. Mm. And swallowing that and realizing that I'm not special and that the only way to be special is to become special um, is hard, very hard. Um, Because you put all this work, you hype yourself up that you're the shit that you deserve this and then you realize wow i could really get replaced just like that and it could all be gone so appreciating every moment accepting every moment enjoying every moment 
even through the hard tough moments like the fact that i get to travel and do what i love that's a victory in its own so not to get frustrated even though it's hard to get not to get frustrated but mostly it's just like hey i'm how many people are there in the world that are at an office job wishing that they could do their dream I'm I'm not one of those people. So why why do I have a reason to be all shitty and bitter? You know yeah. what I mean. I I never understood being so bitter in wrestling because you're a wrestler. It's one of the coolest jobs you can have. You know what I mean. So that's a big thing for me. No, I that's a great lesson to learn. I I you know, I love that a lot because that is so true. That yeah, everybody's expendable. So just. You know, enjoy what you got while you can, and and don't take it for granted. That yeah, massive. I love that. Uh, yo, we're gonna jump into my favorite part of the three count podcast. Uh, it is called the three count podcast, ten count questions. And Mister Martyr, this is how it works. I'm gonna fire off ten questions at you rapid fast, and whatever your answer is, that is your answer. Okay. So here Let's we go. Do- we're gonna put on the magic timer for added pressure. Bing. And in the words of my favorite color commentator, Mike Goldberg, here we go. SmackDown or Raw? SmackDown. Favorite actor? Robert De Niro. Let's go. Pepsi or Coke? Pepsi. Favorite movie? Taxi Driver. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Apple or Android? Apple. Favorite cartoon? Uh, Billy and Mandy. (laughs) That's a great one. Marvel or DC? DC favorite podcast this one <laughs> talking about yeah this market did everywhere too uh nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast uh jay lion let's go jay lion is the man <laughs> oh yeah last but not least my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this podcast favorite curse word uh nematode that's a real one <laughs> if you call somebody a nematode on the street that's fucking terrible. I like <laughs> curse words that aren't like curse words. I like you scoundrel. You fucking you yeah. fuck, bro. If you someone okay, like picture this, right? Red dog. You're in a disagreement with some random fucking guy. This guy calls you you little fucking nematode. I would get so offended. I would get so hurt by that because he had to really think about that one. He had to like he didn't, he didn't just say, "Oh, go fuck yourself." He said, "You fucking." little nematode like that's like that's just so demeaning and <laughs> that's the worst it's the soul it's the it soul does. man i'm like oh it and then even like for some people you're like Yo, i don't know what that means that he says so disrespectfully like i'm yeah like, exactly that's what I mean. i'm ready to fight like, <laughs> yeah. exactly it's like you shrimp like yeah. <laughs> like dude we're just like name shrimp. calling yeah <laughs> yeah i'm a fucking yeah name calling i love that oh no i definitely i could definitely share stories with you like afterwards of like funny ass conversations that people have said to me and i'm like bro oh like i'm like mad but also like impressively offended (laughs) impressed yeah all right man but those are all my questions i have for you so the last thing i need right is for you to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you you can find me up excuse me jesus i just had cereal like right before this podcast it's kicking my ass right now um (laughs) Uh, you can find me on Twitter, or it's called X now, uh, the Apex RM. That's the Apex RM. And on Instagram, you can find me at Death to Me, Death to Martyr, uh, and that's Death and then T O Martyr. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much. I, I'm, I don't use Facebook that much, so you can you can just find me on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> Matt, well, he gave you all of his handles. He told you where you can find him, and you know what that means. Like every great part of a wrestling match. We got to take this home because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Inch Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mount to go wrestling. And like I said, you know, being your sure play, it's never about me. It's about who's in your ring. So who's in your ring? You see the man right there, right? Robert Martyr himself, and you guys know what to do. Tune in to the next episode and be there or... You're following us on all of our social media platforms, which is right up above. You're following us on YouTube. You're listening to us on Spotify. You're even checking us out on Amazon Music. Or you're peeping us on iHeartRadio or whatever that dumb jingle is that they do. Uh, (laughs) You're buying all of our merch on ProWrestlingTees.com or even ForYourWear.com. You're doing all that stuff. You know, you're leaving comments. You're leaving likes. You're leaving 
subscribes. You're doing all that cool stuff. Telling your mom, your dad, your uncle, your brother, your sisters, your dogs, your haters, because we love haters too. So send them our way. You're doing all that stuff. Or really, you're just kind of waiting for this episode to end. You're waiting for the outro. And then you're choosing another episode to listen to. Kawaii. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog, the man that we jumped on Mountain Call Wrestling. And what we need from you guys is to kind of show us some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast, go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast, and just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep it on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count podcast or even find us on ForYourWear.com. Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, between time, love y'all.